Hello again, fellow orchid lovers. It's Danielle here with part two of my fertilizing orchids in water culture. I realized after I posted my last video that there were a few details that I had left out. And so what I'd like to do is just go over a few more details uh, just to give you a more well-rounded view of fertilizing and why I do what I do. So um, I think a conversation needs to be had about the type of water that you use. Um, there are many different types of water available to us. We have, um, personally I use distilled water, but I did buy um, an RO, a reverse osmosis water unit. I just have not installed it yet. <laughs> so I'm continuing to use um, the distilled water, store-bought uh, gallons of distilled water. And that's because distilled water does not have any uh, solids in it. So it doesn't have any nutrients and it's at a, it's at a neutral um, pH. So it's at, at, points, at 7.0 is a neutral pH. So it's basically like a blank canvas that I can use um, to put my nutrients in. Uh, some people choose to use rainwater or tap water and the only thing you need to be um, aware of with those types of water is with rainwater there is the possibility that there are going to be certain nutrients, um, certain things in that water um, that you know you need to be aware of before you give it to your orchids and also tap water um, depending where you live uh, the city could put additives in there that could potentially be bad for your orchids or it may be like in my area, um, my water is uh, city water. I don't have well water, I have city water, which means that um, I don't have control over what goes in it and what doesn't. Uh, it doesn't run through a filter before it comes out of my tap. I do have filtered water through my fridge, but even the filtered water through my fridge has an extremely high pH of um, over eight, and so that's very alkaline. And also uh, the TDS or total dissolved solids in my uh, tap water, even after it goes through the filter, is also in the high 200, maybe 300 range. And since I fertilize most of my orchids around 75 to 90 TDS, that is very high for what I'm doing. So I choose to use distilled water. You can use tap water, you can use rainwater. You just wanna educate yourself about what is in the rainwater that you're using and the tap water that you're using to make sure that it will be beneficial for your orchids. Um, I am of the school of thought with my orchids and my growing conditions that I fertilize all the time. I do a very weak solution. Um, you think about it, if you do the full teaspoon or two teaspoons of fertilizer that the re um, manufacturer recommends, that brings you up to a TDS of around three to 400. Um, and since I'm doing 75 to 90 on most of my orchids, I consider that to be weak. So I do what they call weekly, weekly, <laughs> or weak weekly. So I do a very weak or dilute solution every week. Um, but that varies with the type of orchid that I have. So I have, I do have TDS meter, which um, lets me know how much, um, how many dissolved solids is in the water. I don't really use this anymore because I have my method down. So I use distilled water, there's no questions there. I use the same fertilizer. I know how much I need to put in um, to make it the right level of uh, nutrients and then I also have a pH meter but again I don't really use this because I use distilled water so the pH is always the same at starting point and I put in a measured amount of my fertilizer and I know which amount I need to make it at the pH I want so I really don't use these anymore but I do have them uh, just in case I decide to use a different fertilizer they are there and every once in a while I do check to make sure that I am on track um, but for instance, let's talk about, this is a Miltonia, uh, Miltoniopsis, and they are not heavy feeders. Actually, if you give them too much fertilizer, you're going to kill them. <laughs> so I have a fertilizer that I use for these types of orchids. So we have a Cattleya here. We have a Dendrobium here. We have a Brassivola nodosa here. And then we have a Phalaenopsis here. These orchids... I give my standard amount, which is 75 to 90 ppm. 
when I go to feed my um, Meltonia. I give them, I give this one distilled water every other week. Just straight distilled water so it's just getting hydration and no nutrients. When I do feed it, I take that fertilizer that I have for the other orchids, I put a little bit in and then I fill the rest of it with distilled water. So I'm diluting that fertilizer even further to make sure that I'm not going to burn the roots and affect my Meltonia adversely. Now, when you are overfeeding an orchid, you are going to see signs. You're going to see roots start to burn, and you're also going to see um, burn on the tips of the roots. Okay? So there will be signs that they're getting too much, and you can lower your feed levels accordingly. Um, but, you know, if you educate yourself about the type of orchid that you're buying, what type of um, requirements they need as far as, you know, are they heavy feeders? Are they intermediate feeders? Are they low feeders? Then you can adjust, you know, how much you're making available to them in your growing conditions. You know, again, I grow in water culture, so I feed much weaker than someone in Barkwood. That's just the nature of water culture. And then we have our next level. This is in between my Cattleyas and my Phalaenopsis and my Dendrobiums and my Miltonia is my Oncidium type orchids. These orchids get somewhere in between. So I put, again, some of the fertilizer, but then I put some distilled water as well. Sebastian, please don't interrupt me again. Okay, so that's what I do with those. Then I already discussed, these are the ones that get around um, 75 to 90 ppm. And then the higher feed orchids are going to be Vandacious types and also mini Phalaenopsis. And these orchids, I do, I do a starting point of 150. Sometimes it's a little higher than that. It can go up to 160, but that's around the level that I feed, the high feed orchids. So again, I'm not giving them the, the manufacturer's recommended dosage. The manufacturer's rec recommended dosage is 300 to 400 ppm. That's a lot more than, <laughs> than I give them. But it also tells you give it to them once a month, give it to them every two weeks. I'm feeding my orchids every time. And then when I clean out the vases or the glasses, I rinse the roots of the orchid. So they are getting a little bit of a flush. So every single week, they are getting fed in smaller quantities, in um, very dilute quantities. So I realized I had left that information out. <laughs> um, so again, you know, do your research, uh, figure out what type of plant you have, um, as far as what type of uh, feed requirements that it has, and then um, pick your fertilizer based on the type of environment that you have, and also what type of orchids that you have. If you have higher feeders, you can feed at a higher level. If you have, you know, your medium level, uh, some people think Phalaenopsis are higher feeders too. I give them my medium level and so far so good. The mini fowl has responded to the higher feed, so I do give the mini fowl a higher feed. Um, and then there are some orchids with the finer roots that you're going to want to be careful. You're going to want to um, make sure you don't burn them. So anyways, that that's that portion of it. I think I've touched on everything um, that applies to the way that I uh, fertilize my orchids. If you have any questions about this, uh, please feel free to let me know. And if you have any pointers for me, I'm always open to that. So I hope you continue to have a great day and I will talk to you next time.